In the last video, we noted that singlet and triplet biradicals have very different lifetimes and very different dynamics. This raises the question whether we can predict whether a given substrate, say, in a given set of reaction conditions is going to react through its singlet or triplet state. Can we predict that? Well, the answer is it's complicated and not exactly, because it doesn't just depend on the rate constant of our photochemical process of interest. It also depends on all of the other unimolecular dynamics of that excited state. And so to understand that piece, the unimolecular dynamics, the radiative and non-radiative decay, we need to go back to state diagrams for the ketones and understand, for example, when we should expect the rate of intersystem crossing to be fast or internal conversion to be fast, when we should expect the fluorescence quantum yield to be high, if at all, all these kinds of things. So in this video, we're going to look at three exemplars, three classic examples, representative examples for three different classes of ketones with qualitatively different state diagrams and different radiative and non-radiative decay properties as a result. The first one I want to look at is acetone. Acetone is a classic dialkyl ketone and as such it has all of the properties of the vast majority of dialkyl ketones. For example, their n pi star and pi pi star states are generally quite a bit separated in energy with the n pi star state of course lower in energy However, they have relatively small delta EST for the n pi star state because of weak exchange interaction. As a consequence, this means that S1 and T1 are both pure n pi star states. And if we think back to El-Sayed's rules, this means that inter-system crossing is going to be relatively slow. And it's going to have to happen through a non-radiative process where S1 essentially becomes an activated or a vibrationally hot state of the T1 level before undergoing vibrational relaxation back down to T1. And this is relatively slow for dialkyl ketones because there's no change in orbital configuration in going from S1 to T1. They're both n pi star. In practice, you'll see the number 10 to the eighth per second thrown around for the rate constant of S1 to T1 ISC. The number's not that important for our purposes, and we'll see this over the next couple of slides. This just means that the ISC process is relatively slow for dialkyl ketones. This means that we can expect reactions from S1 to happen with relatively good efficiency without having to worry about inter-system crossing. And so dialkyl ketones will form a large population of singlet excited states that can, in theory, undergo reactions without first converting to the triplet state. At the other extreme, we have conjugated ketones such as diaryl ketones, and benzophenone is of course a classic example of a diaryl ketone. With all that pi delocalization, the energy of the pi pi star state is lowered substantially relative to the dialco case, relative to acetone. And in that case, we get a situation where now the T2 state, the pi pi star state, is way lower in energy than it is in the case of the dialkyl ketone, and it can start to approach the energy of the S1 state. This means that we can have almost barrierless inter-system crossing from the S1 state to the T2 state occurring in these diaryl ketones, and this is very rapid. Again, El-Sayed's rules. Note the change in orbital configuration from n pi star to pi pi star, and the change in spin from singlet to triplet. If we want to get into numbers here, you'll see the numbers 10 to the 10th or 10 to the 11th per second thrown around for the rate constant of inter-system crossing in diaryl ketones. And again, the number's not that important. The important thing to note here is this is at least a thousand times as fast as inter-system crossing in the dialkyl ketones. And this is getting faster than even the fastest photochemical reactions, even diffusion controlled photochemical reactions are going to be something like 10 to the 9th per second. And so it's going to be very hard to get reaction out of S1 prior to conversion to a triplet because inter-system crossing is relatively fast. And so for these guys, for the diaryl ketones, the quantum yield of inter-system crossing from singlet to triplet is very often darn near 1 or equal to 1. And we see little to no singlet on a very short time scale in these compounds. In this example, pi pi star is at a higher energy than n pi star, but this can be changed through subtle changes to the solvent and substituents on the aromatic rings. In certain diaryl ketones, for example, the pi pi star state may dip lower in energy than the n pi star state. 
We won't go into the details here other than to say that it is worth paying attention to the fact that we can alter the relative energies of the n pi star and pi pi star states by changing substituents on the aromatic rings or the solvent. The third exemplary case are strongly delocalized ketones with 2 prime acetonaphthone, the molecule you see right here, as a representative example. In these guys, S1 and T1 are now very clearly both pi pi star. And now we have a case that is in some sense the opposite of the benzophenone case where we have an S1 that is pi pi star and a T2 that is n pi star, but S1 and T2 are still very similar in energy. And there's a change in orbital configuration in going from S1 to T2. And so we should expect, again, rapid inter-system crossing here. And here again, you'll see this number 10 to the 10th or 10 to the 11th per second thrown around for the rate constant. The number's not that important. The important moral of the story here is that inter-system crossing is fast. Fast relative to many reactions, even. And so most reactions we should expect to happen from the triplet state, not from the singlet state in these strongly delocalized and diaryl ketones. And in fact, you'll often see very rapid internal conversion down to the triplet pi pi star state here. And the lifetimes of these can be very, very long, allowing for a variety of reactions spanning a, a wide range of kinetics occurring from the T1 state of these strongly delocalized ketones. So the three exemplars we've just seen, of course, are really sort of the extreme cases for their respective classes. But putting a ketone into one of these three classes will help us get a sense for where it lies, particularly with respect to the rate of inter-system crossing, whether we expect that to be relatively slow or relatively fast. And the general conclusion that ISC is slow for dialkyl ketones is an important one to keep in mind if we're talking about the photochemistry of aliphatic ketones. I just want to close this video by noting something that we just very, very briefly mentioned in our survey of the primary photoprocesses of carbonyl n pi star states. And that's this idea that the n pi star state has an alkoxy radical as an analog. And in particular, these reactions originating from the n orbital. If I just look at this atom inside the n pi star state of the carbonyl, I see a highly analogous atom with an unpaired electron on oxygen in an alkoxy radical, where the difference, of course, is that now we're connected to a saturated carbon. There is no pi bond to speak of, and that's, that's really the only difference between the n pi star state and the alkoxy radical, and we're in a ground state situation rather than excited state. The cool thing about this analogy is that you can use the alkoxy radical as a kind of benchmark. For example, for hydrogen abstraction, the rate constant for hydrogen abstraction by an n pi star state should be at least as big, if not bigger, than the corresponding rate constant for the alkoxy radical. If it's not, you've got something else going on that may not involve the n pi star state or may involve some kind of other process other than direct hydrogen abstraction. And so their use as benchmarks for the reactivity of the n pi star state has been useful in providing evidence of the involvement of n pi star states in photochemical reactions, things like hydrogen atom abstraction, as we mentioned, additions to alkenes, which alkoxy radicals also do, and alpha cleavage processes. Alkoxy radicals are capable of cleaving at these bonds linked to this carbon in blue, which is akin to the carbonyl alpha cleavage process from the n pi star state.